Well, Utah fans, good evening and welcome in to our first coaches show in 2020. Wow. Yeah, that's historic. First of many in 2020. It's good to have you, and it's a great day to be a Ute, as it says here in the basketball offices of Utah basketball. Bill Riley, joined by the head coach of the running Utes, Larry Kristoviak. And our show tonight has always been brought to you by Smith's. Low prices, market fresh, the official grocer of Utah Athletics. You're listening to us on our flagship radio home, ESPN 700. And on Sirius XM, you're watching us tonight a couple of different ways, the University of Utah Athletics YouTube channel and on Twitch. Great to have all of you in. Lots to talk about. Utah got a split last week here at home. Played really well in two games. Just came up short in the second game. But they beat Oregon State on Thursday night by 12 and came up just a little short against the now ninth-ranked Oregon Ducks on Saturday, 69-64. So we'll talk a bit about those games. It's a weird anomaly in the schedule. Utah had 11 days off in between San Diego State and Oregon State. Now they've got another week off in advance of Colorado when you have your travel partner you only have one game during the week so they'll play Colorado coming up on Sunday we'll have that game for you here along the networks and our flagship radio home at four o'clock from the Coors Event Center so we've got all that and more to talk about with the head man himself how are you doing good Billy how was your week last week well I mean I, I felt like we maybe let an opportunity slip away we we didn't play very well um, I mean there were some some positives against Oregon uh, but watching the film and just a lot of, you know, different breakdowns at different points of the game, we knew how high-powered they were, and we gave up. You know, it was one thing to give up a transition basket, but it, oftentimes it was a, a missed. We had a couple missed layups that yeah. turned into layups for them in five seconds, and uh, just didn't. It seemed like there was a lid on the bucket. Uh, from three we were 0 for 10 from three or we missed 10 wide open threes in the first half okay. I should say and um, you know a missed opportunity to beat a top five team top 10 team and uh, we didn't make enough plays so that was disappointing it was a great crowd on Saturday and and we got a, a great win against Oregon State I mean if you think about our league there's nobody that's 2-0 and we've got everybody split and 1-0s and 0-1s and and so um, you know, again, it's uh, it smarts a little bit, but we're not the only team that's dealing with trying to fix some stuff. No, you're not. And into that game on Saturday, we'll talk about Oregon State in a minute, but the game on Saturday, you know, it was interesting. Uh, I was at Shoot Around and listening to you guys kind of go through the game plan and walk the guys through some of the instructions. And, you know, there's so, there were, as you said, some simple breakdowns. A guy like Will Richardson, who has 14 points against you, he's left-handed, and he is left-handed all the way. Did and you pick up on that? <laughs> I've seen him play a couple of times, yeah. and he went to his left pretty much and scored. And the interesting stat was if, if you tell somebody we got beat points in the paint 42-22, they probably would have thought the big men really dominated on the glass and got a lot of stickbacks. Most of their points in the paint came from their guards penetrating, didn't it? Yeah, and there were there was uh, you know some rebound uh, throwouts. I think they count those as uh well, those aren't points in the paint. Those, those are, are second chance second points. Chance points. Yeah, second chance points. You know, they just they kind of manhandled us inside, and and uh, you know we took a number of threes uh, that we missed, so those aren't going to be paint points. And we haven't had a big point presence, a, pa a paint presence up to this point, which we're going to work on this week and try to get the ball inside. But that would have been one of those things that I uh, w wouldn't have thought would would you know be be a good thing for us but the turnovers the fact that we only turned it over seven times i thought was remarkable uh, and we only gave up six threes and and two of those were pritchard from the parking lot right and one of them was was given up the the transfer from unlv that we wanted to shoot and he did the old steph curry after he knocked his down it was the first three he made all year. he was 0 for 14 coming into the game yeah wouldn't you know it so um that was kind of the game plan and you know those two areas if you say they're only going to hit six threes and you only turn it over seven times, I thought we would have won. And the first half, we got a bunch of great looks. Right. And, you know, as you know, when you get open looks, uh, they were in that matchup zone, and I thought we moved the ball and shared the ball and just didn't go in. Uh, 
And then the second half they played man and we didn't have as many of those opportunities. It kind of became a, a tale of two halves where we didn't finish very well inside. I thought we got stripped. We missed layups, tip-ins, and then our defensive balance was a little bit out of whack. We have to improve that. Well, there's no doubt about <coughs> that, but going back to those open looks, I don't think you trade many of those back again. Those were looks no. that in a lot of games you're going to take them and make them, and maybe against Oregon State the other night you did take and make. It's, yeah. and it's, it, it, you can almost understand it if you were on the road but you get that many open looks at home you're going to think most of those are going to go in or at least a lot of them will go in yeah yeah it was it's disheartening you know and we we've been shooting plenty and the guys have been shooting well um but when we needed them you know they we didn't make them and i thought we could have had some separation with making with making some baskets in the first half i was proud of the guys because a lot of times when the lid's on the basket like that you lose your defensive energy and we did a really good job i thought on Pritchard overall you're not you know you're not going to pitch a shutout against him and he's going to get his uh, his first three was literally from 30 feet and then he hit a big one late where we just lost him for a second but players of that nature are really going to make you pay when that happens but those came off of the second half came off of offensive rebounds which kind of reared its head so there was there was little phases uh, we certainly didn't finish the first half well as you talked about uh, Richardson getting left twice, you know, defensive transition, making some mistakes at the defensive end in our transition, and it was we had a one-point lead with four minutes to go before halftime, um, and then you know they went on a a nice little run, and it ended the half with a mistake that we talked about. You know, let's foul him a couple times. Well, you we, called a timeout specifically for that. Yes, sir. So, and I, I, you were standing right in front of me, and you kind of waited there for about 20 or 25 seconds as the team went to the locker room thinking about what just happened. Yeah, and as did the other four guys on the floor <laughs> as as the ball got to the rim. And, you know, mistakes happen. Yeah. It's a It's a – you know, you you discuss that with Alfonso, and he just said he kind of got caught up in the. You know, I wanted to make sure. Did we hear that? And it was yes, but uh, he's never been called on to come in and give fouls. You know, he's 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 been a, a big time shooter, and that's one of the things we went through film today. It has to be attention to detail, and you know, communication is a two way thing. It can't just be, hey, let's talk, because you have to have listeners, and. Um, you know, it, it was an unfortunate send us to the half, and I was a little feisty. And, it, you know, at any point, we took a two-point two, two point lead, and that's when Justice hit the three to take the lead back. So it didn't last for long. And there were a lot of positive things. And we got a young group that I think is is hungry, and now we've got a tough, you know, road to face with getting out on the road. Well, I think maybe the biggest positive, I, I don't want to speak for you, but yeah. for me, you've had a lot of teams with more experience than this team play that Oregon team at home and on the road and get down 10, and then all of a sudden it's 22 points. Yeah. This team got down 10, and then all of a sudden it was a tie game. This team showed a lot of fight considering most of those guys on that floor hadn't been in a game like, well, I shouldn't say that because you played Kentucky and you played San, but you hadn't played that Oregon team. And that Oregon team over the years against teams with DeLon Wright and Jakob Pertl and Brandon Taylor have provided a lot of tough opportunities. I thought that team showed some good fight. No, they did. There's no question. And I said in post game, and I feel really strongly about this team, uh, you know, we've had a couple games. If you look at the uh, – if you look at the Coastal Carolina game where we got wall up there on the road, I thought we kind of threw in the towel. It, it Just was, started chucking shots It up. was a funky yeah. environment. And then even as bad as we got beat by San Diego State, that was a game uh, in the second half, 15 minutes to go in that game. Timmy makes a great pass to Ryland who misses an open three that cuts it to five. And I think those are those moments where it, it can energize you, cutting it to five. And instead of the three that we didn't get, they hit a three. So that's a six-point play. And then I think we kind of ran out of steam. But, you know, if our team has I've been really proud of our team for sticking in it. And and it was quick, you know, that, that little run that we got back in the game. And then the crowd came alive. The, the Huntsman Center really found some life and then we kind of shot ourselves in the foot on a few occasions but there's no questioning we play we play hard and we play together and the thing I challenge our guys with is let's make sure that we're bringing the scouting report and some of the smarts uh, with it 
and we have to improve our defensive rebounding. If I tell you Saturday morning at shoot-around when you and I do our pregame interview that you're going to have the ball and a chance to tie it with 30 seconds left in the game against the number four team in the country, you'd probably take that option, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, I certainly would. I mean, who? Not knowing how the game plays out, but you're having the ball and a chance to tie it against Oregon five hours, six hours from now. You probably would have been ha- happy with that, right? Yeah, there's no question. And even looking at that final play, um, and I don't know if you've looked at it, but we just, uh, it was right to perfection. We just had one guy that didn't do what he was supposed to do. And uh, otherwise, we get a wide open three look uh at the basket and we you know we had some guys that's a that's a hard road and that's what i challenge our team uh it's on me to sub some more you know because uh, timmy and booth and sometimes rylan those guys they're playing well and i don't have as much faith in maybe some of the subs as i need to but even if it means getting them a couple minutes before the eight minute media timeout so they can get rested because our numbers show that we haven't closed out some of the halves in the games and I I really think that fatigue comes into play it's not our guys aren't in shape it's just hard to play with the pace we're playing on offense and as hard as we're playing on defense it's a lot to ask and so we're gonna we're gonna throw some other guys into the fire and we hope that they're ready Uh, we had a good practice today with some of that that unit and let them blow the pipes out a little bit and It's going to take more of a collective effort. So it's not just um, us breaking down film, trying to get our players to do things different. It's really important to self-scout and analyze what we're doing as coaches and rotations and see if, if we can help them. We're going to grab a timeout here because it wasn't all negative last week. They got a really nice win against an Oregon State team that then turned around and beat Colorado, a team that not many teams beat over at Colorado. We'll talk a little bit about that, pass out our weekly awards, look ahead to the buffs, talk about the conference and a bunch of different stuff. All that coming up here on the Coaches Show. Just a reminder, our show today and all of our broadcasts are brought to you by Anheuser-Busch making sure you enjoy responsibly with a nice cold Budweiser or Bud Light when you watch the Utah basketball games. Proud sponsor of Utah Athletics. Live from the basketball facility here and uh, Larry's office down the hall. We're here in the lobby having a good time talking to Utah basketball. It is Utah Basketball Coaches Show from Learfield IMG College.
don't say this very often. Tonight's Utah Coaches Show brought to you by Smith's. Obviously, they're the title sponsor, Low Prices Market Fresh. Also brought to you by our friends at the Larry H. Miller Dealerships. If you need a car, visit LHMauto.com. It's as easy as click it, get it, and drive it. Larry H. Miller Dealerships driven by you. Did a pretty good autopsy in that first segment on the on the Utah-Oregon game, which was a really good basketball game. And Autopsy. Oh, yeah, we were going back. and Oh, that just got me again. <laughs> that means you died. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> we were doing a good reevaluation of the uh, Utah Oregon game, uh, and it was a good basketball game. But like I said, the weekend was was not a bad weekend for you guys. You played really well in that game, but you really played well Thursday night. And really, from about about the twelve minute mark of the first half, you guys controlled that game against Oregon State, kept them at arm's length, had a lead as big as fifteen in that game. Ended up winning by 12. There was a lot to like in that game. Yeah, there was. Our, our guys really locked in. Uh, and Tinkle got off to a good start in that game. We, we, uh, you know, Riley had a hard time guarding him, and he he knocked down, uh, you know, a number of points. And Ethan Thompson, for the most part, you know, shut him down for, compared to the numbers those guys have been getting. Um, you know, the only the guy that gave us a hard time was Reichel. I thought one on one putting the ball down and beating us, but we did a good job on Kyler Kelly, and it was a little funky to start with because we had so many days off, so that was a little bit of a problem. But once we got it going, um, you know, I thought from an offensive transition point of view, we were as good that we spent the better part of the last eleven days talking about it, making sure we're dedicated to running and uh, really got the tempo going, and they looked a little bit gassed in the first game. They didn't look as gassed yesterday at ele elevation, and maybe they had Christmas issues too coming sure. back after the break. So I, I really was proud of the guys responding, and you know, it got a little bit ugly at the start of the second half. I thought we got sloppy. Um, and then we recaptured it again and got it going. So it was it was a it was a great game. You, you mentioned that that Riley had some trouble with Trace Tinkle. Trace is a very good basketball player. Yeah. He's, he's kind of their version of Timmy Allen with a little bit better jump shot. He just does a little bit of everything for that team. Can shoot it, score it, pass get teammates involved. But Timmy Timmy had some good success on him. But I thought the guy that really gave you a nice lift second half, especially guarding him, was was Mickey. Yeah, Mickey Mickey's a, a real solid defender. Um, he understands the concepts, and he's been coached really well. You know, Hanno Medela uh, in Finland, those kids are growing up, and, and Mickey's played a lot of basketball. And and with some older, he's on the national team there, and he started for the, the, the men's national team as a young kid. So he's been thrown up against it, and he really understands how to guard, and he's committed to guarding. Mickey's all about the team. Sometimes you want him to shoot more. You know, for example, in the Oregon game, he hit two threes, and he's yeah. wide open at the top of the circle, and he didn't take it. So he's figuring some things out, but he gives us a great boost from a defensive point of view, not only one-on-one, -on -one, but I think he's also a tremendous pick-and-roll defender. Yeah, he is, and, and even against the bigger bodies, against Oregon, when you played Oregon Saturday, you know, he was playing against Dante. That kid is 7-1, and then he's about 7-9 with the wingspan. Yeah. He didn't back away and shy away from that. I thought he did a good job getting his body up on him and, and holding his ground in his position. Sometimes the guy's just going to shoot it over you, but Mickey didn't really give an inch to the big no, guy. No, he didn't, and, and Timmy guarded Tinkle on – uh, Thursday and one one and once we once he didn't get in foul trouble, it yeah, kind of down the stretch when you knew he only had a foul or two and you could afford to turn him yeah, loose on him. And he and he did a good job and we we you know he got the majority of his points early in that game. So um, that's a you know senior center senior leading scorer. Is Ethan a senior, maybe a junior? I think he might be a senior as well. I, I don't know. I mean, that's a team with yeah. a lot of Pac-12 experience under their belt, and they, they beat us a year ago here. So, you know, to start off the conference play, especially with that break that we had, was a little nerve-wracking. But... Um, you know, it was it was a great great start for us. Leads us into our players of the week. We have our team player of the week, and then we have our sub of the week. Let's start with kind of our, our team player of the week. Are we going to go with Timmy? 
I'm going to go with Booth. Okay, good. You know, I thought uh, I thought he was he gave us a great lift, uh, kept us in the game on Saturday. I thought with career high 24. Yeah, I shouldn't say kept us in the game. We had a good performance. Timmy was solid. It's just percentage wise, you know. I think six for 18. Um, so we just, you know, we have to be ready. Teams are collapsing a little bit on on Timmy, but Booth, when he makes up his mind, now he's one of the top five guys, if I'm not mistaken. I think I was told today one of the top five in the country at two percent or two point field goal percentage, um, and settling sometimes for threes. He knocked down some big threes, but he's a it's a little bit like DeLon if he makes up his mind to go get on the rim, and he's a tremendous free throw shooter. So those are some things we have to start encouraging him to do more of and a little bit less settling. But um, made some big plays for us and continues to get better defensively but I Timmy's got that honor quite a few times I think it might be time for Booth to to pick that one up well, I agree 17 against Oregon State then 24 a career high against Oregon he had a really good week and you mentioned getting on the rim when he turns that corner with the ball in his hand one of two things is going to happen he's either going to flush that thing or he's going to get get to the foul line because he's got a great explosion when he turns that corner yeah or what I, what we're seeing lately and he's figuring that out is finding the the guys on the perimeter yeah that's where a number of our three point misses came from in the first half made good passes to to Riley to Jackson uh, we just didn't knock them down but that that potential assist is a big thing you know that he's making the right play and then we have to we have to uh, make sure that we we hit Hit, hit the shot. So he'll be our team player of the week, brought to us by our friends at University of Utah Health and Sports Medicine. 16 neighborhood convenient health centers to serve you and your family. UofUHealth.org. Who's your Subway Sub of the Week? Mickey? That, that'd be Mickey. Okay. Yep, no doubt. I mean, he's a he's a warrior and um, battling some knee tendonitis. and Got whacked in the face boy, pretty good on Saturday. He sure did, and I talked to Trevor today, our trainer, uh, Trevor Jamison, and, and he got hit on the nerve. It's similar to type of thing where you get you know in the funny bone where you go bananas and lose feeling and mickey's whole eye took him in the back and his eye was twitching and his jaw dropped and he had no control over so uh, you know top of the head on in the middle of his cheek sent him for a loop but he bounced back pretty quick yeah he said it was still a little numb in the post game when we talked to him too but he's a tough kid and he'll be yep. our subway sub of the week by the foot long sandwich at subway get chips Two cookies and a 20-ounce drink for free hey, at Subway. I took my kids to Subway Friday night yeah. before my son's Olympus game, and I shopped at Smith's yesterday. <laughs> oh, man. How are we you, doing? You talk about a guy that supports his own program. Yeah, I'm not drinking, so I didn't have any Budweiser. Well, you're probably being sick and taking medicine right now. Yeah, it's a, new, have any it's of a New Year's resolution. Really? Yeah, I'm going to lay off the sauce. Really? Yep. Is there? Okay. Yep, I feel better. Good. Except for this cold you're battling yeah that's the irony of it yeah maybe i should start drinking again you should have a hit <laughs> of, the, of the hair man put that resolution on the back burner <coughs> anyway subway a proud sponsor of the coaches show we'll take a time out we'll come back uh look around the conference and talk a little bit about something called net rankings mm. you guys know what those are larry does he mm. can kind of explain them not even really so, even sometimes when you lose you can win in the net rankings. We'll tell you about that straight ahead. It's Utah Basketball and the Coaches Show from Learfield IMG College.
Coaches Show continues tonight, presented by Smith's Low Prices Market Fresh, locations to serve you. Live from the uh, Huntsman Basketball Facility. Not to be confused with the Huntsman Center. That's right next door. We're in the Huntsman Basketball Facility in the Utah Basketball Offices, where we do the Coaches Show uh, every Monday night. Next week, by the way, we're going 5-6. to six. You know why we do that every year? Because we have the College Football Championship game which is on our flagship radio home, ESPN 700. So on that second Monday of January, um, and I know you and I are both interested in that game, mm -hmm. might go see our friend Dave Petron next yes. Monday night. He always entertains us, University of Utah Health and Sports Medicine. So uh, we'll do the show next week from 5 until 6 o'clock from these very spaces and then turn it over and see who's the ch which Tiger is the champion, Clemson or LSU. I'll let you make your pick next week. Okay. Marinate on that until yeah, next week. Yeah, I'll have week. to talk to my people. Yeah, see what, uh, see what your folks tell you. So the conference was a little crazy this weekend. Um, Arizona, Arizona State, and Stanford and Cal played their single one-off games, but everybody else had home and homes. You guys split. Oregon schools split. Everybody else. Everybody else split on the weekend, including Oregon State, who – didn't look great here the other night, and then they go to Colorado yesterday, and nobody really wins much over at Colorado, especially teams like Oregon. And lo and behold, they went in there. And I, I didn't watch the game. I saw the end of it, but you told me that Colorado had a lead on Oregon State, and then Oregon State just rallied up late. Well, if you, if you could uh, uh, just do the first four minutes and the last four minutes, Oregon State probably beat them 30 to – I don't know, eight. Okay. They started off hot. I think they got up eight to two. And then Colorado got in control of that thing, and it looked like they were running them out of the building. And Oregon State went to their little 1-3-1 one, one half-court trap, and Colorado couldn't score. Which and you guys dealt with pretty well. We did. We did. Um, yeah, it was it was really strange. Uh, they, uh, you know, and you, you feel bad for a team. I don't care who it is. It's, it's always tough to lose one like that, but. That was a that was a big shocker. I think they finished the game bill on a twenty two to five or twenty two to three run. Oregon State did, and um, that's not an easy thing to do there. So not in that building. No, it was uh, it, you know creates a. It's like we started fresh. Everybody, or, I mean Arizona and Stanford were likely going to beat those teams at home, right? Um, and then everything else was kind of a coin flip. It, it was a weird outing because on Thursday night after our game, you get back home, and I I watch. UCLA beat Washington at Washington. That yep. was one. UCLA hadn't been playing well, and then they had a kid come off the bench and score 24. Freshman. He, he had 18 points the entire season leading into that game, and then they turn around and go out on the Palouse and get beat by Washington State. And then you've got USC who look good, and then they look terrible. It's weird. It's, it's early in conference season, and everybody's trying to figure some things out. But what I think we're seeing is – we kind of know this, too. There's no easy games. There isn't any easy games, and I think there aren't any secrets with anybody's team. And it's those people you talk about that maybe didn't get talked about a whole lot. That's what I think really makes a difference in conference play is we all know that Pritchard and Timmy and Tinkle and those guys are going to get theirs, but who is it that steps up? And I thought, um, you know, that's – Jake Kyman, I think, is the kid's name from yeah. UCLA. He had who, seven or eight threes. Yeah, and, you, you know, there's a lot of good players in this league, and they might not get talked about. And conference play oftentimes is kind of a way we've mentioned it at Christmas time. Maybe you're not a freshman anymore. If you're coming from JUCO, you're not you, – maybe you're part of the program. And so guys get a little time to step away from preseason. And if you don't guard some people right, that the supporting casts are the people that make differences in a lot of games. Yeah, they do. And, you know, Mick Cronin's still trying to figure out. He's first-year coach at UCLA, so he's still trying to figure out his team and who to play and who not to play. And yeah. <laughs> he jokingly said in the post game, he goes, we might have won a few more games if I was a better coach and figured out that Jake Kymans can score a little bit. But, but now he knows it. But now the league knows, too. Yeah. There's no secrets on Jake Kyman anymore because if you hit eight threes in a game, you become part of the scouting report. Don't yeah, you? that's that's the the neat thing about this, and um, gives an opportunity for players to step up. And as I said, there's a lot of highly recruited players in our conference that you know maybe didn't find their niche yet, or who knows what's going on. So you got to be ready. 
Yeah, you do have to be ready. Uh, Utah's got a week to get ready for Colorado. It's a weird anomaly in the schedule. We'll talk a little bit about how Larry and his staff are going to treat this week and what we need to know about CU. They've got two really good players, a lot of guys back, but two really outstanding players. We'll talk about the buffs next here on the Coaches Show from Learfield IMG College. Make sure you grab an ice-cold Pepsi, maybe a Code Red Mountain Dew, whatever your flavor and taste happens to be, and settle in your seats and enjoy your next Utah basketball game. That next Utah basketball game is going to be on Sunday. Yeah, scheduling quirk, uh, Colorado, uh, you know, early in the year. Utah had 11 days off leading into conference play, back-to-back -back games Thursday, Saturday, and now six days off before the buffs, so... Uh, your guys should be pretty well rested heading to Boulder on Saturday or Sunday. Yeah, I hope so. We're going to need to be. It's it's the uh, only place that's higher in elevation, and um, you know they'll have a week off too. So we're both kind of smarting a little bit from our last game, and that you know we know the deal there. There's a, they're one of the top pr uh, predicted finishers in our conference, and McKinley Wright is a lot like. Uh, you know, the guys we just faced, Pritchard and Ethan Thompson, there's the, some real solid point guards in this league right now, and um, they do a great job rebounding, and that's a team, there's probably four or five guys on the supporting staff, like we just talked about, that can score 20. I mean, it's a really good shooting team, and they have pretty good balance, uh, Tyler Bay and Batty, and then a bunch of shooters, so um, it's a nice si size and physicality inside, you know, McKinley doing his thing and then some shooting around it. And there's a reason that they're, what, 13-3 and three or 12-3, and three, something like that. So, and, and 
probably on the cusp of being a top 20 team had they not lost to Oregon well, State. They, they, they squeezed in the rankings this week. They jumped in at number 25. Great. And people, because they, they, they benefited from having that late Sunday game. Most of the voters had turned their ballots in already and had remembered that they beat Oregon on Thursday night. Well, by the time most of those ballots got turned in, 5, 6 o'clock yesterday afternoon, the 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 uh, Colorado Oregon State game didn't finish up till about six thirty or seven. Okay, so a lot go. of a lot of people had turned those ballots in with that win, and so they squeezed in at number twenty five. But they're a good team. They were yeah. a preseason top twenty five team, and as you mentioned, Tad's got the two star players, McKinley Wright, who's a great point guard, and Tyler Bay, but. Really, it's a support cast. Lucas Seward, who seems to have been around for a while, he can really shoot it. Deshaun Schwartz, who can really shoot it. Uh, Evan Batty, who's that big physical body in the front court alongside yep. of Bay. So they, Gatlin, Gatlin, yep. who's also still there. So he's he's. I think he brought back seven or eight guys from last year's team. Yeah, and they're, and they're they're really good. I mean, they're good on both sides of the ball. They're they're an elite defensive team, rebounding team, and um, that's a tough place to play, as we know. So it's going to be. You know, Sunday at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, not exactly like Friday night at the fights kind of deal, but um, w and between our programs, there are absolutely no secrets. It's just going to come down to oftentimes, you know, scrapping and finding the level of physicality and getting the 50-50 balls, and we're going to have to be ready for a, a lot of different facets. Our guys have responded pretty well, and so, you know, we we gotta we got to be ready to go. This this will be one of the few weeks I'm guessing you and Tad don't talk because you guys talk on a pretty regular basis, don't you? Yeah, we do. I I, I really you know I've got a lot of respect for Tad and um we we all I, we don't like playing each other. You yeah. know we really don't and um we've taken turns kind of whipping up on each other and he's we've had some loaded teams that we have gotten the best of them for two or three years in a row and. Um, so it's it's uh, there's a lot of respect I th I think mutual respect between us and we run our programs in similar fashion and and um, so yeah and we both came in I think he had a year under his belt before I got here but we've both been in the league about the same time so you get you know you've been here for nine years he's been here ten um, there's not many of us left you know it's Dana and Sean Miller and us two yeah um, are the four guys so I've been in those twice a year coaches meetings where I was the newbie and didn't know which way was up and then all of a sudden you work your way around and you're welcoming all the other new guys we got three new coaches this year so um no I'm 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 happy that the idea was for everybody to take care of business in the preseason and we won just under 75 percent of our conference games so the conference now we can beat up on each other a little bit and you don't see you know there's not a lot of bad losses and I think there's some respect nationally, and hopefully we can get. I, I I hope we can get five teams in the NCAA tournament. That would be a realistic goal. The one thing that always seems to stand out about a Utah Colorado game, and especially the ones over there, it, very rarely does somebody scorch the nets. V very rarely does somebody blow. But but it always seems to be a toughness game, and mm -hmm. I know that's right up your alley, and I know Tad a little bit too, so it's kind of right up his alley. But it it always seems to be. One of those games where the team that gets the more 50-50 balls yep. and maybe the team that gets that, that extra offensive rebound or two because both teams get after it. But it, 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 it always feels to me like which team's a little tougher on that day. Yeah, and it's got a little bit – the word we use all the time is outlast. You know, you from an offensive point of view, you're trying – okay, if the defense is really good, let's outlast them and just make that one more play – you got to stay in plays and continue. And from a defensive point of view, it might be, you know, getting back because there aren't any secrets. No. We're, and we do a pretty good job of taking away what each other wants to do. So you've got to go from option A and option B down to C and D, and it usually involves a little bit of grit and, you know, staying in the play. And that's that's what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, a too. little late in the shot clock game too, yeah. because you know what the you have a pretty good feel for what the other guys can. So you're guarding each other for 20, 25, yeah. 26 seconds, and it's usually coming down to that making that play with three or four left on the shot clock. Yeah, I hope that's the case. Yeah, I hope you're right. You know, when you get on the road like that, that's what you hope for. And um, we've had some good battles, so we've got to be prepared for some of that and conditioning and different things come into play. Um, Four o'clock on Sunday from the Coors Event Center on campus at uh, Boulder. We'll have the pregame show beginning at 3 right here along the networks in our flagship radio home ESPN 700. Quick break. Do you know what net rankings are?
Wichita basketball, how the that non-conference schedule Larry was just talking about maybe is paying some dividends for his program and some others too. We'll talk about that next year on the Coaches Show from Learfield IMG College. Brought to you by Smith's Low Prices and Market Fresh. So if you're a college basketball fan, a hardcore college basketball fan, something called the net rankings came into effect, was it last year or the year before? It's been in for a couple of years now. Mm -hmm. uh, they used to have something, three letters you know, called RPI. That's kind of gone by the way. They've kind of pushed the RPI by the wayside. And they've used these net rankings, which factor in a lot of different things. And the bottom line is it's kind of the de facto number that the committee really looks pretty hard at. If they look at a lot of different numbers, but these net rankings are pretty big. Um, for our listeners that aren't quite sure exactly what net rankings are, give them a kind of a, a Reader's Digest version of what they are, and do you like them? Well, I think it's more scientific than the, than the RPI, certainly. Um, you know, the one thing that's a little bit, Odd is it's all it has a lot to do with efficiency or offensive and defensive efficiency. We were actually talking about this in the office Thursday before yeah, the were. Oregon State game, and it's crazy what can happen to your efficiency if you remember the end of was it the was it Oregon State? Yeah, where we had the ball and we were running the clock out, and Timmy kind of chucked it up at the backboard, so yeah. that that <laughs> dropped our efficiency by like five spots. Uh, offensive because it was a missed shot and it turned into a layup at their end so it dropped us like seven spots in defensive efficiency and all these numbers go into play so you know as much as you'd like the 20 point win you'd like to put 
your, your subs in and let it we're fighting kind of tooth and nail now down to the stretch because the efficiency is part of it but you know it's kind of a strength of schedule now we need Kentucky to to beat a lot of people in the SEC we need Minnesota to whip on everybody in the Big Ten and we need BYU to continue winning games and any of the play any of the teams you play like like you said we went up I think six six spots seven spots Sunday afternoon when Oregon State beat Colorado so there's a lot going on um you know and you got to hope that those teams in our preseason San Diego State's going to keep beating people so that's good and then you know there's plenty of weight in us winning games too and then you have if you can win games and keep within or lose games and not lose by more than five you know there's all those things so it's it's uh it's interesting to keep track of, and we're 47th. I think you mentioned that. Yeah, that they were 48th after they beat Oregon State on Thursday night, which was the highest you had been in, in, in quite some time this year. And then after the loss Saturday afternoon to Oregon, you moved from 48 down to 54, not too far. And I hadn't really looked at the net rankings, and then last night I was kind of doing a few things. I figured I'd bring them up. And then after Oregon State had beaten Colorado, who had beaten Oregon, you guys hadn't played. But you went from 54 to 47. Yeah. So you moved up seven spots to your highest ranking of the year without even having played a game. Yeah, no, it's 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 crazy. And I think, I'd, you know, you start losing sleep if you pay too much attention to it. You take care of what you can control, obviously, which is what we're doing, um, and focusing on all of that. And then you can cheer for some people that were on your preseason schedule. That, yeah. That's always important. I mean, we need Kentucky to start rolling you know and then it wouldn't be unusual for them with that group of freshmen for them to start playing better as the year went on um, the one thing that I don't think they pay enough attention to is is how you finish a season you know it's almost like if you if you don't get enough done in November and December we've done pretty well in the Pac-12 you know finishing in the top four but that this, you know, and the people in the committee don't go, you know, I really think they've improved because there's no metric to say that they've improved. But um, I, I think they need to be able to sit down and have that human element in those conversations. And certainly we need to try to continue to do that. But that's one of the, the human sides of all the data that kind of goes out the window. Well, that's one of the way places where you hope that committee and why you have a committee and not just computers maybe looks at a team like Utah who's got 11 newcomers and one of the youngest teams in college basketball. If you guys have a couple of good non-conference wins, which you do, and then you have a good, maybe you don't have a great, but you have a good conference season and you've shown a little bit of improvement in conference play, maybe that's where you hope the committee says, oh, wait a minute. Didn't they have 11 freshmen and sophomores on that team? Right. Maybe we give a little credence to some of the some of the things or we take a little bit closer look yeah. at Utah. Yeah, you hope so. You know, you, if, uh, if you don't win the Pac-12 tournament, you're going to be in the bubble discussion or whatever the discussion is. Maybe it, maybe not with the net and how conference plays out. But if they're sitting around discussing things amongst four teams as to who's going to get a spot or two, you'd like to think that that come into play. Yeah, there's a lot to look at. It's uh, net rankings. You can do a little <coughs> reading up on it. And it literally, it's not like the AP poll or some of these other things or even the RPI that would update every few days. This thing is updating every single day and every single night. Every game. Every game. So, like he said, you could you could get driven crazy by it. Really start paying attention to it in the next couple of weeks as teams begin to sort their way through conference play. All right, we'll take our final time out on the Coaches Show. We'll come back, take a look ahead to the week, and talk about a few other things as well. All coming up right here from Learfield IMG College.
the show as we lead, lead forward. Next week, again, a reminder will be at 5 o'clock Mountain Time, going to 6 because of the national championship game, but that's next week. This week, how do you handle practice with so much time off again? Just a regular week for you guys? Yeah, well, um, we got after it today with the guys that haven't been playing a lot of minutes. But, you know, we've still got some guys beat up. I think Booth and Timmy and uh, Mickey and Rylan, they did some shooting, and we did an extensive film session, a little team-building thing where we all came up with a one word. Uh, you've seen that where you come up with a, a single word for the year, and we shared that with our team. And then those guys got a great run, and they played 11 games to seven, and so they got tired. And we're going to get after it tomorrow and Wednesday. And then take uh, – I'm sorry, we're going to get after it tomorrow – and then, uh, yes, tomorrow, Wednesday, take Thursday off and have Friday, Saturday, and depart for Boulder on Saturday after we practice here. That'll be good. It won't be that unusual now that we got through today. Uh, the rest of the week, it's two on, one off, two on. And uh, we're doing plenty of scrimmage, and so we'll, we'll, be, uh, we'll be all right. Do you, do you like where the team is right now, kind of between the ears? I know you're, you're banged up. You don't have any major injuries, just yeah. the bumps and bruises. But do you like where the guys are mentally oh, right our, now? We've got a great group, Bill. You've been around yeah. them. And they're, they're all attentive in the film session. Everybody wants to do the right thing. It, it has to do with experience. Uh, you get in front of that crowd, playing a top-five team, there's a lot of energy. Okay, you don't make shots. We what we have to do is just do a better job with some of the the th the. I know one thing we can control is not let Richardson go left. You know, it's those <laughs> men. It's those mental things where you've got to implement the scouting report because there's enough sparks flying and different things going on. It's crazy. Let's bring our brain to it. As I said, we play really hard and we play together. We just need to, to polish some things up and, and bring the books and play a little bit smarter than we have been. Utah Colorado Sunday, pregame at 3, tip-off at 4 from the Coors Event Center. This is the Coach's Show from Learfield IMG College.